Hi Cliff, we're uh, here on the eve of the Shine Conference, where we started really. Um, uh, so we've Cliff Fryer here from Unlimited, Ashim Singh, uh, who's just produced a uh, report, uh, the Venture Society, and Philip Blond, who says he's not going to contribute at all. But his <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. Could certainly, <laughs> that is certainly be acknowledged thank here. <laughs> thank you. Um, but you've had so much exposure over the last uh, week or so. I'm just you've tired. Done your I, bit. All I said, David, is I'm exhausted, <laughs> and I don't feel I have anything worthwhile to contribute. But we, thank, we thank you for morally blackmailing me <laughs> into the situation where now I'm forced to contribute. <laughs> what joy. Thank you. Yeah, but anyway, so the context here is yeah. uh, partly the big society. Uh, we've heard the context, is, the context is making a difference. The context is how do we use the state and market mechanisms to make a difference. And Ashim's report is essentially about creating a new infrastructure to make a difference. It's about driving it down to locality. It's about lowering the bureaucratic barriers. And it's about facilitation and the most efficient delivery of money and the most productive seeding techniques to, to people who are trying to deliver. And what's the fine, uh, fine grain of that? Well, I mean, for me, it's about the grassroots. Um, it's about getting that support and that money uh, as much as possible down the chain to those grassroots. Um, now, the way we propose it is by leveraging the sort of the USP, if you will, those grassroots organizations, and that is their locality. That is the fact that they are part of a community story. They're germane to the life of a community, and they are part of this vibrant thing that's called civil society. And so, you know, what, what better USP could there be in a world that's driven by stories than this community idea? So how do you, how do you create the infrastructure that leverages this? How do you create the infrastructure that gets private investment into it? How do you get the, create the infrastructure that allows these small entrepreneurs to come together to, to form consortia or effectively to better harness government money? How do you get these uh, small entrepreneurs, grassroots entrepreneurs to come together and actually show their impact in ways that are less debilitating, that let them focus on the big ticket, their, um, their business, and that is to create these local hubs, these local uh, small labs, these lablets, uh, these, bits of, uh, these bits of local infrastructure that um, allow people to come together, that are uh, sort of equity funding, that uh, offer certain local uh, ideas, like a local dragon send, for example, not necessarily, but you know, it would be completely localized, completely up to each community what they choose, and uh, their supply chains and uh, various back of them could be, could be broken by uh, organizations higher up. So, so what we call social labs, so things like possibly unlimited if they're interested in this sort of thing. You know, what we propose is these two layers of infrastructure, the local infrastructure, and then uh, sort of supported by these larger foundation type models, that can really make a difference and really seek and serve and aim to drive that funding down to the grassroots, because it is about the grassroots. And what I would also say is, um, the report, uh, it's an interim report, um, and, you know, we sat here, we delivered it to people who do this every day of their lives, you know, with their lives, and uh, we want those recommendations to be ameliorated, to be improved, to be, uh, you know, attacked, criticised, you know, barraged, you know, whatever, but just to make better by the experiences and the, you know, the hopes and the aspirations of these people who we delivered it to today. Hey Cliff, I think Unlimited uh, <laughs> commissioned this report, so what is it going to mean when it comes down to what social entrepreneurs are doing in localities at the moment. So if somebody who's doing great work locally at the moment or wants to says, well, this is great, but is it another think tank report? Is it practical? What does it mean to me, possibly? Well, this is drawn from the reality of the lives and work of social entrepreneurs. This isn't the creation of a political party putting something in their manifesto. It's not the creation of a think tank. It's not the creation of a support agency like us. This is the reality that there are hundreds of thousands of people already working to make their community or society better. What's life like for them is really difficult, all sorts of barriers in their way and very little help. There are support agencies like ours. I hope we do a good job, we continue to strive to do a better job. But we just cannot reach the sheer numbers of people who deserve our help. And to me, what, what this report does is it says, you know, social entrepreneurs are plentiful in number, they do fantastic work, it is unacceptable that such a small proportion can get the help they need to, to start up. We've got to change that, and we can't expect magic money to come out of nowhere. 
So we've got to connect them with the people who really care about their work and success. And that's likely to be either local, people you know in your locality, or it's going to be communities of interest. You know, if, if somebody is really worried about breast cancer, then there will be other people who have been affected by that, families and so on. And so one, either local or communities of interest will be bothered. So getting those hubs that relate to the locality or to that community of interest and, and removing some of the regulatory barriers, making it easier to start up, um, making it making doing good something you get rewarded for, not something you get penalised for. That's what this is about. I think this is a tipping point. This is the first time we've had an election where social and community entrepreneurship have been a mainstream part of the platform of the political parties. They've been central to the debate. This is a tipping point from being a very exciting but sort of what's considered a fairly marginal area of activity to being the mainstream. And for me, 35 years on, blimey, from the first time I started to try and do any sort of social venture, that can't come too soon. There are real challenges in these ideas, uh, and the way that we need to progress, I think, is, is not so much more thinking about it as doing it. Doing it with other small agencies, doing it with social entrepreneurs themselves. Social entrepreneurs need to own this program and be showing government the best way to proceed. So just to, to su summarise that, in, in my perception, is we've had during the election debate people saying, well, yes, of course, social entrepreneurs, volunteers, community activists are doing great stuff, but it's going to continue to be small scale because people won't put the time into it and so forth. But here it looks as though you've got a model possibly to scale things up. I hope so. And I, it's, I think it's wrong to say that it's small scale in the first place. Look, when, when my father was dying of cancer, it was the, the state that provided the clinical care, and it was fabulous. But it was a charity set up by a social entrepreneur that told me what, what, what the medications meant, what I should be looking out for, what I should be talking to the doctor about, what I should be asking my father about, because you know, it was apparent that things were getting towards a, a final point and I should talk to him really seriously about some of the decisions that he'd been making. It wasn't the state that did that. Now that was an absolutely vital service. And, and it's not a question of the state or social entrepreneurs. It's a question of the state and social entrepreneurs. That's the difference.